Teipel is ready for your questions. Coach, we're going to start on the right side in the back row. Hey, Coach Heipel, Jamal Kennedy, WCPA 12 Sports here in Montgomery. Or in Montgomery. Um, knowing how the Alabama game went last year, you know, that now goes to Tuscaloosa this year. What are you expecting uh, that environment to be like when that game comes this fall? Great Alabama team, um, hostile, tough environment. They're one of the great programs. Like, difficult test, absolutely. Second row, left side. Josh, you've mentioned a couple times today how hungry your football team is and not satisfied from last year. As a player, you won a national championship. What will you try to impart to them about the challenge of going from where you are now to the top of the map? Yeah, when we first started, um, we were way behind. And in some simple steps, you can make up, you know, big ground, yards at a time, let's say. And uh, the higher you get, the tougher it is, the more attention to detail, the more the nuances are of what you're trying to make up. They become inches, and the inches are tougher to make up than the yards are. And being real um, transparent and open with them about you know, where we're at and where we got to get to. And our guys have worked extremely hard. Uh, there's been a heightened sense of urgency. You can see that in the weight room. You can see it on the field in the meeting room. You can see it in their off the field behavior. Um, now. We've had three good phases, three good quarters of offseason. We got got another one left. We got to have a great training camp, and uh, and then you got to be able to reset and play week to week. You don't have to be the best team in the country uh, week one. You got to be better than the team you're playing every week, and you know that's got to be the mission. Second row, right side. Hey, coach Michael Bronner, WNSP 105.5 in Mobile. Your offense, of course, is one of the most electric in the SEC. It's, it's very difficult to game plan for. How much of that, in your opinion, is, is game plan and scheme versus the actual players on the field? How much of our success is dictated on the? The scheme of your offense versus you know, personnel. Well, I tell you this, if, uh, if you don't have players, you don't have dynamic players, and that can be up front, offensive line, quarterback, your skill guys, doesn't matter what you draw up. So at the end of the day, it comes down to the, the dudes. And you got to put them in a position to be the best versions of themselves and give them an opportunity to win. But uh, you better have players. Left side, second row. Chris Williams, uh, CBS Oklahoma. Coach, there's still a lot of love for you in the state of Oklahoma. What are you expecting the emotions to be like when you return to the Palace in 2024? Um, man, that's so far away. And you, took, you caught me off guard. I don't remember it being called the Palace while I was there, so I had to, had to think about that for a second. So um, Memorial Stadium, great place to play, great environment, great fan base, tradition rich. Um, that's so far away, though, man. I'm, I'm trying to think about 23 before I get to 24. Otherwise, I'm going to get in trouble. You know what I mean? But uh, um, yeah, that, uh, in my coaching career, that will be a unique moment going back there for sure. Right side, front row. Hey, Coach. Steve Moulton, WZZN. Uh, I wanted to ask about Mike Leach. At one point uh, during the season last year, I spoke with Coach Leach, and he talked about your offense and a couple of plays looking very familiar. So uh, I wanted to ask you maybe your best Mike Leach story, sir. I'm sure he had something to say about my athleticism <laughs> during, the, during that comment, too. Uh, man, Mike, um, you know, I talked to him three weeks, uh, you know, before his passing uh, about there, and like most conversations, put the phone on the table, put it on speaker, and, and just kind of listen. My wife was shaking her head, but, uh, you know, full of stories. And, and uh, you know, had a great night with him, uh, you know, a year while he was sitting out of football. Uh, I was in uh, Norman at the time, but he came back and, you know, talked with the offensive staff in, in particular. And, you know, we had a great night going out and, and having fun and just kind of sharing stories. He, uh, I mean, you guys know he's a great storyteller and, and one of the great personalities in college football. Changed the way the, the game was played on a wide spectrum. Um, being able to, to see the game played in space, which it, it currently is. Left side, second row, then pass it forward. Tyler Shaw with KBTX and College Station. I'm going to ask a, a couple quick ones. First, um, <coughs> just your thoughts on A&M coming to Tennessee. It's a place that the only other time they've played was you know, during COVID. So this is the first time they'll get to experience uh, um, you know, Tennessee in full force, I guess. And then, um, Coach, how, how are you managing and mitigating, I guess, any distractions right now with, um, you know, some of the sanctions on, uh, on the program? Yeah, uh, I mean, Knoxville is going to be a great environment. I, I don't care who we're playing. Uh, they're going to pack it out. 
It's going to be, you know, 35 to 40,000 at Vol Walk every Saturday. Vol Navy is going to be, you know, 150 boats plus tied up. Um, probably on Friday night having a great tailgate and, uh, you know, kickoff. That place will be 75, 80 percent full an hour before kickoff. Man, it's it's a great environment. It's unlike uh, anything that I've I've been a part of. It, uh, it's a special place, and um, um, you know, as far as distractions, uh, I think in today's landscape, there's so much outside noise uh, on a consistent basis. Uh, you got to come to a realization that your players are going to see it, um, but they got to only uh, intake what uh, what matters and and. Uh, Make sure that you stay driven and hungry and com same competitor every day. Right side, front row. Hey, Coach, great to see you again. You too. Uh, AP Stedham, AP and Kelly, as we see at Syndicated Radio. Coach, um, the arm strength of Joe Milton <coughs> III is self-evident. Where yeah. has he upgraded and have we seen, what haven't we not seen from Brew McCoy yet? Yeah, um, Brew is um, extremely healthy. Um, you know, he was coming off a, a lower body injury uh, the year before really was getting healthy as the season unfolded. Um, I think he's running. Uh, he's as explosive as I've ever seen him. He's in great shape. Uh, I think he's really comfortable and confident in what we're doing. Year two, typically inside of our system, our wideouts make a huge jump. Expect him to do that. <clears throat> Joe's got elite, you know, God-given arm talent. Um, not many people on the planet are, are gifted with an arm like that. He's become extremely comfortable and confident in who he is. That's changed his consistency inside of the building, his work habits. Fundamentally, being consistent in his platform uh, as he navigates the pocket has allowed him to continue to grow and be more accurate with the football. I thought he did a great job during the course of spring ball. I'm really excited to see him uh, in, as we get going in training camp. Left side, front row. Uh, Chris Farbling, KCOU 81 FM. Coach, you guys last year had a had your best record since 2001. Of course, you beat Alabama for the first time in 16 years. Um, when it comes to recruiting, how important is it to get to have that off-field success, to have proof that it's Tennessee brand, to get it back in a national radar? For a lot of recruits or, who maybe weren't old enough or weren't alive back when Tennessee was on top of the SEC. Yeah, I grew up in an era where um, elected, electric, um, you know, on the cutting edge forefront of offensive football lived inside of Neyland Stadium, inside of the orange and white. And, um, you know, now, you know, when we first started our first two years, one, the NCAA stuff, right? But two, you're trying to tell them what it's going to be, the culture, what the, the on-field play is going to look like. Now you have tangible evidence, proof of all of those things, and you're able to put the, the sanctions in the, in the rearview mirror and, uh, and move forward. Uh, it changes the game for us uh, as far as the recruiting side of it. And, and uh, you know, I think people have seen that here recently. On the aisle, third row. Coach, uh, Dan Peck, ESPN uh, 106.7 in Auburn. What are the most important things a transfer portal quarterback, a newly arrived quarterback from the portal can do to win over the locker room and, and get himself ready to lead the team on the field? Yeah, I, don't, I don't think there's just one cookie cutter way to do it. Uh, at the end of the day, your teammates want to see you not talk about things. They want to see your actions. That's your consistency in the building. It's how you treat people outside of it. You got to be with the guys. You can't just be one of the guys, though. Um, you know, and, and then at the end of the day, you got to show that uh, you're going to master you know, what you're doing offensively and at that position. And um, you know, that takes time. It takes work. Um, if you're consistent in those things, though, you'll have a chance to win the team over. Left side on the end. Vince Ferrar, 99.1, the sports animal in Knoxville. <laughs> hey, Josh. What are you guys doing in terms of mental health and supporting not only your players, but coaches as well who have such a grind and everyone in the program? I think you got to create a culture, uh, a place where people want to be first. You know, if you're dreading going into that facility every single day, that becomes a even heightened uh, sense uh, of an issue. Um, so I think culture is uh, really important. I think the communication of it, uh, the dialogue being open and transparent, that, you know, you have resources at Tennessee. We're fortunate to have a full staff that lives right inside of our building that our players have you know, tangible access to every single day. It's organic as far as them being in the building, uh, our players seeing them, which I, which I think is really important because it becomes destigmatized and it just becomes a part of, of the fabric and the DNA of what you're doing. Um, but being real in that dialogue, um, you know, we have a slideshow essentially there is on our TVs uh, inside of our facility, mental health being a part of that. Um, 
you know, if you see these signs, if these are issues, you know, here's easy people to, to come into contact with as well. Uh, your coaches, your care team, uh, everybody being uh, succinct and sharing information, hardships that may be going on, issues that people might be uh, dealing with, changes in, you know, their personality. Um, and uh, trying to be a 360-degree team that, that takes care of your student-athletes and your staff. Right side on the aisle. Austin Stanley, A to Z Sports, Nashville. Ryan Day was asked one change he would make about the college game, and he said hash marks like the NFL. What are your thoughts on that potential, that idea, and how that would affect uh, what you want to do offensively? Yeah, I don't know that it necessarily affects what we do. Um, at the end of the day, we play some portion of the game, you know, 10% of it in the middle of the football field anyways. Um, you know, spacing, splits, if you're playing in the middle, you're going to be able to apply pressure to both sides. Um, it's different than when you're um, a shrunk boundary. Um, at the end of the day, I, I, I'm not looking for any changes inside of college football on, on the playing field. We got, you know, a play clock one this year. Um, I think the game's uh, elite the way that it is uh, as far as the on-field product. but. Um, I'm open to any changes, too. Last two questions on the aisle, back row. Coach Corey Labounty from Mobile, Alabama, WNSP 105.5. T. Martin, the last national championship <coughs> quarterback for Tennessee, yeah. had to learn and grow behind Peyton Manning. Same thing with yourself, learning and growing Tennessee from year number one to year number three now. Talk about your own growth on the podium as well and just as a coach within your third year entering. Yeah, I think as as a head coach, you become more efficient and effective, and you know your yearly calendar uh, to how you handle the situations that inevitably come up. Um, you know, all of those situations, you know, help you grow and you learn better ways to handle it. But I think as much as anything, you become a, a better, more effective uh, communicator. That's with your staff. It's with your players, uh, creating a uh, a true culture of uh, connection, and and uh, that's certainly something that we continue to build at Tennessee. Right side, second row. Yeah, Coach, you guys had an electric offense last year. You were able to constantly put up points. You had several <coughs> track meets, it seemed like, last year. Mm -hmm. um, but defensively, there did seem to be some struggles there where you had a lot of those high-scoring games. This year, what kind of is the focus to allow the defense to continue to build as well? And where are you guys trying to improve most to be able to have as much fight as your offense does? Yeah, year one to year two, we took a, a lot of great strides uh, defensively too. Uh, in particular, uh, effectiveness uh, against the run. Uh, we uh, became top 20 defense in, in that statistically. Um, I think we are first or second in zero negative yard plays uh, in turnovers. Um, so there's a lot of positives. Um, in the games that we didn't play where we're capable of, um, we got to get better defending the pass, and we got to do a better job on third downs, really third and longs, third and seven plus. Um, and both of those things are affected by you know playing elite in the secondary, right? Your corners, your safeties. Uh, a year ago, um, no excuses. Um, we were banged up. That was in spring ball, it was in training camp, it was during the course of the season. Um, we got to stay healthy. We have more competition. I think that lends itself to us taking a step on that uh, in that area. And then you also have to be able to affect the quarterback, not just with pressures, but with your front four. And uh, through addition of, of personnel and development under Coach Garner and Coach Eckler, I feel like we've made a stride there too. So the anticipation uh, that I have uh, for our defense is to take another step to play elite defense. Uh, that will happen uh, while we're there, and uh, looking forward to seeing it. We got great leadership. Believe in Coach Banks, our defensive staff, and uh, I love the guys that we have on that side of the football. Uh, our personnel has done a great job this offseason. Think uh, and know that we'll take another step. Coach, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it.